This is the Let's Pretend story of the Golden Fleece. Come one, come all the me. Hello, pretenders. Hello, Uncle Ted. You know, this time, our story is a legend from Greek mythology. It must be all about gods and goddesses. Yes, and one of those gods was Orpheus, whose magic music launched a ship. So it's my idea that we should get right on to Let's Pretend and travel there by having our own magical music to launch our ship and plow straight through the briny deep. Can I arrange for the magic? Sure, Lance. Swell. One, two... Three. We're moving. Magical harp, play on. Once upon a time, there was a fabulous region beyond the sapphire of the Aegean Sea. Here dwelt the gods and goddesses of their times. Perhaps the best known of all these unusual inhabitants was an ageless centaur named Chiron. Chiron, with the massive head and shoulders of a man and the lithe, rippling body of a magnificent white horse. He was unexcelled as a teacher. And sooner or later, all the heroes of their time came to learn from his great wisdom. Our story begins in his mountain cave, where a favorite pupil, Prince Jason by name, awaits Chiron's arrival. Chiron! Well, Jason, you are ready to leave me for your great adventure. Yes, Master, but I wanted your final counsel and farewell blessing. Jason, you have been an earnest student. Your father would have been proud of you. Thank you, Master. You are now well versed in all I could teach you. No one can outride you, that I know, for you have learned it on my own broad back. And in addition to your vast knowledge of medicine... You are a master of the sword and spear. Now then, what do you set as your goal? First, master, I wish to reclaim my father's throne, which the wicked king Peleus stole from him. A long but worthy adventure. I know of only one other more hazardous than that. And that is what, good Chiron? To restore the sacred golden fleece to the kingdom of Thessaly. The golden fleece? As I recall, it once covered a brave ram who carried two royal children over land and sea to save their lives, but gave his own in the effort. That is right, isn't it? Aye. He carried them to the distant kingdom of Colchis before he fell exhausted. And as he died, his fleece was turned into gold. And to this day, it is the highest emblem of strength and courage. Tell me, Chiron, to secure it then is such a difficult mission... Only youth would presume to ask that question. Then, good centaur, my master, perhaps that will be my second task. I am exceedingly proud of you, Jason. And may the gods favor you as I think they will. Now, your blessing, esteemed Sharon. I pray you, stand here at the door of my cave until I am out of sight. I want to remember you as a dear part of my home and my life. Farewell, my son. Frightened little lad. I think Jason fears to get his golden sandals wet. <laughs> or perhaps he wishes his master Chiron were here to brave this woman stream for him. My curiosity is greater than my resentment, good mother. How is it that you know my name and that the centaur Chiron is my teacher? I know many things, Jason. And since you plan to cross the stream, I wish to cross too. So take me on your back. What a mysterious person you are. These great brown eyes of yours seem to hold the wisdom of the whole world in their depths. So come, onto my back then, and across the stream we'll go. The course you take is a wise one. Watch the uprooted tree there. Oh, curse the thing. What now, Jason? My sandal. It's wedged between the rocks, and I've lost it. (laughs) 
<laughs> From this, I know the whole story. You go to Iokos. Your purpose? To bid the wicked King Pelias give up your father's throne. You grow more and more amazing. Your amazement will be nothing compared to that of King Pelias. Just wait until he sees the strong youth with only one golden sandal. Now I will go with you to the court to meet King Pelias. <laughs> King Pelias on a holiday. Aye, Jason, and all faces are turned toward the shore. The citizen, a pardon, citizen. Yes, stranger. Tell me, please, why are all the people dressed in holiday attire, and where are they going? Why, young man, and your mother, I presume. Our king, good Pelias, is about to make a burnt offering to his father, Neptune, king of the sea. <laughs> the mills of the gods, Jason. What do you mean, good mother? Before all his kingdom, you will confront your enemy. Leonti, look. He wears but one sandal. At last, Philip, the one-sandaled man has come. Never mind them, Jason. Inquire as to King Pelias. Where is your king, fellow? There, on the shore, where the smoke rises. Yonder is King Pelias. Approach him, Jason. Your Majesty. Who are you? And how dare you interrupt the ceremony of sacrifice? It was not I, Your Majesty. Your subjects raised this tumult because I lost a sandal in the stream, and therefore one foot happens to be bare. You see, it is true, Leonti. <laughs> the king turns white with fear, Jason. Pray, what is your name? My name is Jason, sire. Pupil of the centaur Chiron. Your Majesty, it is he. I have heard that Chiron is a wise teacher. Let me discover how much you profited by his teaching. I shall do my best to answer, Your Majesty. The Talking Oak has said there is a youth with one golden sandal who seeks my throne. What would you do, brave Jason, with such a man if he were to appear? If I were king... I would demand that the youth with one golden sandal prove his courage and his right to my throne. I would send him in search of the golden fleece. <laughs> well said, my wise Jason. And since I am the king, I command you at the peril of your life. Bring me the sign of the right of kings. Bring me the golden fleece. I go, Your Majesty. If I fail, you will not see me again. But if I return with this marvelous emblem, you will then descend from your throne and present me with your crown and scepter. <laughs> I shall keep them safely until your return. <laughs> This forest is dark and mysterious. Another step and behold, you stand before the talking oak tree of Dodona. It is indeed majestic. And now I pray you, what is my procedure? <laughs> Address your next questions to the talking oak. Talking oak tree of Dodona. How shall I recover the golden fleece? Build a gallant ship. Summon all the heroes of Greece. Call Orpheus. Hercules. Argus will build it. Good mother, I cannot understand. All the branches are speaking at once. Patience, it will clear. Listen. The talking oak speaks. Hear me, Jason. Go the ship builder arm, build a galley for fifty men. Call the music of his magic arm will quiet the waves. Appoint Titus, the stargazer, for your helmsman. Hercules, who holds up the sky for your first oarsman. Call your ship the Argo and your crew 
the Argonaut. Hear eastward for the kingdom of Colchis. The talking oak tree has spoken. Your adventure begins. My deep gratitude, O oh prophet. Is that all? No. Cut me off, Jason. Cut me off. Who speaks? I do. The branch of the tree nearest you. Cut me off. But your voice. Is it that of the old lady who brought me here? <laughs> Perhaps it is. Who knows? Cut me off. Do as I say. Very well. Now then. Carve me into a figurehead for the prow of your ship. I will then be able to advise you when you are far out to sea. Well spoken, good woman. And now, Jason, remember my words. And may good fortune attend you. And so with 49 of the bravest heroes of Greece, Jason began his dangerous voyage. Saved many times from danger, yes, even death by the advice of the talking oak, we find him now safely landed at Colchis, the shrine of the Golden Fleece, in the throne room of the king. I greet you cordially, Jason. Princess Medea, make our guest welcome. You do, Colchis. Great honor, Prince Jason. Never before has hero triumphed over the hazards of such a long and dangerous voyage. You are generous, Medea. Oh, what my daughter says is true, Jason. Now tell me, is your voyage for pleasure, or do you seek to discover new lands? The purpose of my visit is twofold. Or perhaps I should say, since I have seen the lovely Princess Medea, my business is twofold, my pleasure boundless. Your gallantry, Prince Jason, is equaled only by the swiftness of your decision. Uh, if you will pardon the interruption, Medea... You were saying, Prince Jason, the purpose of your visit? Sire, I will be completely frank with you. I seek to regain my father's throne, which King Peleus wrongfully took from him. Peleus has sworn he will give back the crown and scepter to me if I return with the divine symbol of kingship, the golden fleece. With your gracious permission, sire, I beg to execute that sacred mission. Well, father, if you will pardon the interruption... The nature of Jason's visit must considerably change the color of his welcome. Not at all, providing he can meet the requirements. Are you prepared for that, Jason? I am quite aware that they are dangerous, Your Majesty. But I do not know exactly what they are. Then I will be happy to tell you. First, you must tame and harness my fire-breathing black bulls, the gift of Vulcan, the fire god. Should you escape their fiery breath, you will meet the deadliest enemy yet encountered. The prize you seek hangs in a tree. Wrapped around its trunk is a dragon whose fiery and white-hot fangs reach outward forty lengths. <laughs> if you succeed in slaying the scaly beast, then the golden fleece is yours. Well, the banquet in your honor is at sundown. Until then... I leave you to the tender care of Princess Medea. Well, Jason, is your business still twofold and your pleasure boundless? Since I looked into the depths of your great brown eyes, Medea, my purpose is strengthened a thousandfold. You have no fear, then? Only that you would deny me the warmth of your smile. By my soul, you are a man, Jason, worthy of a reward which you shall have. When the shadows of midnight hide the moon, I will be waiting for you at the sundial. Tigress or woman, sainted or bedeviled, where your dark eyes lead, I will follow. Jason, have you been waiting long? The dear, at last. It seems a dozen moons have come and gone since last I looked upon your wondrous face. Empress of my world, let me hold you close. Nay, Jason. Later there will be time for soft words. But now, if you would secure the golden fleece and regain your father's throne, you face the gravest test of all your life. Look, beyond the wall there are two fire-breathing bulls. See, the flame from their nostrils lights up the whole meadow. 
How do you propose to yoke them and still live? May the gods grant me the speed of lightning. If I escape their breath, I shall take each bull by the horn and twist him to my will. <laughs> oh, my Jason of the bold heart. That is what I wanted to hear. Look you, here is a charmed ointment. Apply it to your body now, and their fiery breath will not even scorch. Medea, you are then what I've suspected all the time. A sorceress. I, art learned from my gifted aunt, a great enchantress named Circe. Oh, and I could tell you more. The old woman whom you carried across the stream and led you to the talking oak is known to me. I should have known those great eyes of the old woman who guided me. Now you stand again before me, young and beautiful Medea. You are ready. Go now. I will follow. The bulls are waiting. The gods smile on you, Jason. Breathe your fire, stout fellows. Let me, will you? Come on. There. Now the other. And there. Oh, Jason. You have tamed them. Let go their horns now. They will follow, gentle as lambs. And now, Medea, the golden fleece and the dragon. Where are they? Listen. I hear a violent roar and hissing sound, but see nothing. Look yonder through the trees. By the crown of Jupiter, the dragon. Careful, careful. He can reach 40 lengths. Stand back, Jason. I fear him not. My spear is ready, and I charge. Jason, stay. No need to prove your courage further. Enchantment is as useful in this case, and quicker too. Now you have need for swift action. In this jeweled box is an incense. When the dragon reaches this way again, I shall release it. He will fall to the ground, senseless with sleep. Watch out. Here comes his head. And now, the incense. It is as you said. And now what wondrous woman? Come, part the branches of the tree above the coils of the dragon. Like this? Medea, the golden fleece. Oh, splendid, magnificent golden fleece. Take it down quickly, Jason. It is mine. Thanks to you, Medea, the golden fleece is mine. Now I shall return to Colchis. You haven't a moment to lose. My father, the king, is angry. He plans to burn your ship and put your comrades to the sword. So hasten. Below us is the harbor. Your ship, the Argo, and your brave crew await you. Wave to them. Tell them you have completed your mission. Medea, with your help, I have captured the Golden Fleece, royal emblem of all the kingdom. Now make my triumph complete. Come back with me as my queen. My king and my lord. Our destinies are forever joined together. Lead, and Mia follows. Crew of the Argo, we won! See? The Golden Fleece is mine! Uh!